Sao Paulo is home to one of Brazil's favorite footballing sons. The son of Italian immigrants, he was famous for his cannon-like free kicks. Long-range shooting, mesmerizing tricks, and of course, his distinctive moustache. Once I went to trim it and thinned it out too much on one side. So I tried to even it out, but it looked awful. So I shaved it off. That's the only time I did so. But I soon grew it back. I can't imagine myself without the moustache. I felt naked without it. My father had one, and even though he'd passed away, I could hear him saying, leave it, don't shave it off. So the moustache will stay, as it's a tribute to my father. Roberto Rivellino spent most of his career at Corinthians, making almost 500 appearances for the Sao Paulo club. He played 92 games for Brazil, appearing in three FIFA World Cups, most famously in Mexico in 1970. Rivellino was 24 at the time of the 1970 tournament. Brazil boasting players of the calibre of Pelé, Carlos Alberto, Jarzinho, Tostao and Gerson simply overwhelmed their opponents. Rivellino scored three of the Selecao's 19 goals in the tournament, including a trademark free kick against Czechoslovakia in their opening game. The first match enabled us to see how prepared we were, but we went 1-0 behind. I was lucky enough to score the goal that levelled things up. It settled us down. My goal was important because we went on to score four. It was a wonderful start. Brazil had been drawn in a tough group. As well as Czechoslovakia, they had to face Romania and the defending champions England. Still, they won all three and then eased past fellow South Americans, Peru and Uruguay, to book their place in the final. Everyone expected us to go out in the first round, and suddenly we were in the final. Confidence was high, but we never thought we would win. Playing in the final was a different challenge, and we were up against Italy, a team with a strong World Cup tradition. But I think we played our best match of the tournament, and somehow it was the easiest game we played. We reached the final just as the team was peaking. That Brazil side played some wonderful football, so much so that our national team enchanted the world and is still considered the best team of all time. The final goal in Brazil's 4-1 demolition of Italy combined sublime individual skill with almost telepathic teamwork. We've seen it all many times before, but sit back and enjoy. There are very few players who can say they are world champions. I experienced that joy. For me, it really was my biggest achievement in football. I dreamed of it as a young boy, turning professional, playing in a World Cup and being a champion for Brazil. And we all know what a World Cup means to us Brazilians. More than four decades on, expectations are high once again as the current national team prepares for another tilt at the trophy. Luis Felipe Scolari's squad was impressive in winning the FIFA Confederations Cup last year. But can they win the main event on home soil? Their predecessors tried and failed back in 1950, an outcome that rocked the nation for quite some time. Scolari is on the right track, and Brazil are one of the favourites. I'm not saying that they will win, but whenever Brazil take the field, they're expected to do well, especially at home. I would like to see the team play good football. There's no obligation to be champions, but Brazil must play well. You can lose so long as the public is happy with the performance. That was certainly the case in 1970, when Rivellino was among those to endear himself to Brazil's football-mad public. One of the best midfielders of his generation, the mustachioed maestro, was a great entertainer.